You know, some days a girl just has to lash out. Hey lovelies, welcome to my channel. Today it's going to be all about magnetic lashes. That's right, we are finally going to be trying out putting on some magnetic lashes. Now, I'm not talking about the like sandwichy kind that we've all tried and probably had horrible results with. Uh, I recently had one myself where I thought I was going to go blind. So we're not doing that, but I am going to try out a magnetic liner and lash. And I recently hauled these in my fall haul and I had asked in that video what you guys would like to see a more in-depth review on. And so many of you said the magnetic lashes. So here I'm gonna be working with Glamnetic lashes today. Now I did pick these up, I think it was on Labor Day, these were certain ones that were they were having for like 40% off. And thank goodness for that sale because you guys, this is a serious investment. I mean, honestly, even at 40% off, this was definitely like a fair price for a product. Now, I will go ahead and go into like Glamnetic and their sales and all of that a little further into this video, but I am very excited to try these out. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on YouTube, I strive to keep beauty real real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my videos. If you are really excited to know a little bit more about Glamnetic, if you're wondering if it's worth the price, if it's actually as easy as they say it is, and you wanna see me do it before you spend your money, let's get into it. All right, so before we get into the application, I just wanna give you guys a little bit of info that I have been looking at on Glamnetic. I didn't even realize it when I bought these, but one of the pairs of lashes that I got is a mink lash. <sighs> I'm really kicking myself for that, and that was totally my fault as a consumer. I should have been digging a little deeper. I honestly, like, I just can't believe that people still have mink lashes because you really can get some beautiful, like, lashes that have no animal products in them. Now, I don't see anywhere on here talking about whether or not Glamnetic is cruelty free. And I want to just be clear because I saw another video where someone was talking about because they have mink lashes, they're not cruelty free, but you can be a brand that uses um, animal products and still be cruelty free. You cannot be a brand that uses animal products and is vegan, right? But you could also sadly be a vegan brand that isn't cruelty free. Cruelty free is more about whether or not you are testing on animals. And it's also more about how your supplies are procured. So it's not really about whether or not it's an animal byproduct. Like you could have a product that has beeswax in it and still be a cruelty free brand, if that makes sense. So I just wanna make that clear. I will say they do have some very beautiful like non mink lashes and that's what this pair is. I am going to try on both of these for you guys today since I did get both. Because I got this pair and I don't think I can return them, I will probably use them, but I would never buy another pair of mink lashes. So again, that's on me. I should have been a better consumer and researching them. But I also, you know, I think that there's a lot of like wonder about magnetic liner and lashes and if it's safe and everything. And what Glamnetic says is that um, all products have been tested for safety. Our eyeliner has the same types of ingredients you might see in other liners or mascara. What makes our liner magnetic is iron oxide. There are no heavy metals or parabens in our formula. Iron oxide is a cosmetic ingredient commonly used for a pigment and is rated as non-toxic according to EWG's Skin Deep profile. So it also talks about like, of course, you know, with any cosmetic item, if you have any pre-existing eye conditions, talk to your doctor and all of those things. So just that like little disclaimer that's in there. But so I feel pretty safe, like putting this on my eyes. I mean, I will let you know in the future, of course, if I have any problems, but for right now, let's go ahead and get into the details of these lashes. Now I do see in their like shop section that you can actually filter by mink or vegan, but in the shop like first menu, it just brings up all the lashes at the same time. And that's where I had the problem is I, I didn't even see, I think the first one that I put in my cart was a vegan lash and I, I just assumed that they were all vegan. And again, that was really dumb, but um, I think that's where it was. But you can go through and once you hit shop, you can hit filter and that will bring you to the selection of, you can shop by length, you can shop by type and all of those things. So the two types that I have are the live-in lash. And again, that's this mink lash. And these are regular price $29.99. I'm gonna pull these up here and I'll get them nice and close so you guys can see them. So they are a very natural lash. And that was one of the reasons why I chose these ones was because they just look to be like a slight upgrade on your natural lash. Now, you do have a um, like a little magnetic strip in here for the lashes to sit on. So you wanna make sure I'll take one of those out so you can see that some of this is just that like 
landing strip, if you will, where you put the lash back in between wears. So I would definitely recommend keeping the box. Now I know that um, Glamnetic talks about like their lashes having more magnets than your standard magnetic lash. So this should, in all theory, help it form to your eye shape better. Now that for me, being someone who has very like almond shaped eyes is really appealing because a lot of lashes, like even just the regular banded lash that you would hear on, they really don't sit on my eyes very well just because I really have to like tuck it in a little bit more. But so these are the Live-In Lash and then I also got the Vixen Lash. Oh, and by the way, they do have like little descriptions of the lashes. So Live-In is described as a short round lash. Now then the Vixen Lash is a medium wispy lash and these are also $29.99. I really like this little like pull out case. These, I will take one of these out so you guys can see. They're quite a bit longer and a little bit more dense than the Live-In Lash. So I think what I'm gonna do is pop on one on each eye so that you guys can see like one style on each eye so we can compare them. Now, of course, we needed something to adhere the lashes to our eyes. So I did go ahead and pick up their liner as well. Now, I thought this was interesting because I see that they now have a magnetic felt tip pen liner. If that sounds like more of your jam, you might really enjoy that. Um, those are $42.99 and they have it in black and brown. But the classic sort of like regular liquid liner is $37.99 and they also have that in black and brown. So it's a nice option to be able to have depending on the style that you like. Now, obviously I only have the traditional liquid to try, so I can't say anything about the pen. Um, they do also have some kits and things that are available if you're looking to get a bundle. So I'll talk a little bit more about like Lemnetic and pricing and everything um, at the end in my final thoughts. I'm really looking forward to trying the lashes on. I'm a little nervous, but I am looking forward to it. So let's go ahead. Okay, so I zoomed you guys in pretty close. Now, I only have one coat of mascara on. I have the L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black Mascara. And by the way, if you are interested in seeing details on this whole look, it is going to be in an upcoming like makeup play day, trying new makeup sort of video. I just filmed that before this and that will probably be going up right after this one. So again, subscribe so you don't miss out. Here is the lash tube. I will open it up in just a second and show you guys the tip, but Glamnetic does say to shake before use and make sure that you create a line as thick as the lash magnets, which totally makes sense. And then also it says for optimal results, apply the Glamnetic lashes when the liner is 80% dry. And I'm assuming that means at least 80% dry because obviously if you like put it on and then like stick it right onto like wet liner, the adhesion isn't gonna be there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open so you guys can see. So here we have just your like typical kind of like old school liner. I've got other swatches here on my hand, but I'll show you guys what this looks like. I'm gonna like thicken it up a bit so that you can see. It looks nice and black. Come on, camera. There we go. So this is it here. This is actually the Wayne Gossa precious opal that I have in my waterline, but this is looking really good. Like it looks like a nice black liner. I am gonna be curious to see if it dries down super matte because right now it's not looking like matte matte, but we will see. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this and uh, we'll let it dry and then go to apply some lashes. I do already have a bit of liquid liner, but it's like smudged out. So this I'm just gonna like pop right along the lash line, very close. Now, ideally I would not already have mascara on. I would probably put my liner on first and then my mascara and then my lashes. But since I was filming this look, I at least wanted like one coat of mascara on, right? So I would say that's like what an average thickness of liner. Like it's not super thick. It's not super thin. I'm thinking that that's going to be enough to get us through. I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye. Okay. I got like a little fleck of eyeliner here because it of course got stuck in my lashes because I have mascara on and I went to like comb it out, land it on my face. So I'm just going to let that sit there and dry for a minute. But I did want to say I'm a little worried is like extra dramatic, but I feel like this liner is already like looking a little 
like gloopy. I don't know, the brush tip is not the most amazing brush tip. It's not horrible, but I would definitely make sure to like wipe off enough, but maybe not too much so that you like get a bunch of skipping. If I like these lashes, I will probably consider getting, especially once this is done, I would probably consider getting a like one of the pens because that is just how I prefer to put on an eyeliner. If I'm going to do eyeliner, it's usually either a pen or pre preferably a brush tip pen, but it's either a pen or an actual pot that I can use with an actual brush just for that like accuracy. So that's just me, but I feel, oh, it did dry down pretty nice and matte actually. So I'm pretty happy with that. I would say like on a one to five scale, it's at least a four in the matte realm. So that's not too bad at all. But I think I'm gonna try the Live and Lash first just because that is the more like natural of the two. They're both very natural. I mean, you guys, this site has some like very, very dramatic lashes if that's your thing. Um, it's not really my thing. So I went with something on the softer side. Now. I am not usually one to apply lashes with tweezers. That's just never been my thing, so I don't normally do that, or a lash applicator. I do have them, but I don't normally use them, so right now I'm just gonna go in and not do that. Hmm. Um, I don't, I don't really like that. I don't know if you guys can see this. here on the tip there's like little white fuzz like um like they you know when they were manufactured like from something that they were stuck to or something so i don't really love that um that's kind of a bummer because you know you'll kind of see that it would be like having hairy liner um the mat the magnets are really nice and small and the lashes feel really light but fuzzy band is already kind of like a no for me but Hopefully it's either just this lash or it's just this pair of lashes, but let's just see if the darn things work, right? Okay, well, I will say where it is stuck to my lashes, it's very, uh, almost like liquid latexy. I don't love that. All right, so there is that lash applied. In all honesty, that went on pretty good. I was a little worried because the inner corner for me is always the thing. I'm sure, I think it's actually most of us. That's where they like tend to pop up. And I feel like I don't know if most eye shapes don't quite curve in as much or something, but mine just always like pop right up. And at first I felt like it was doing that, but I was able to like nudge it into place. Although I do think you're going to have to have a thick enough line there to really make sure that those magnets adhere, obviously. So if you want a very, very thin line there, you might not get as much adhesion as you want. And of course, you know, any lash band is gonna add a little bit of thickness, but this with the magnets, you know, it just adds that little bit more, but I mean, can you guys even like see? Like, I can see the band a little bit just because it's not like black black because it almost has like a gray look from that little bit of fuzz. Now I will say, I honestly, if I have like a traditional like so-so lash, like even like an Ardell lash, which I really like. Sometimes the lash band, um, it has some clear on it. So I will just take a little bit of like a cream or gel eyeliner and coat that lash band. So I could, I could kind of see like doing that over the top of this lash band to make it a little darker. But, um, I mean, that's just me being extra picky and obviously also because they were a little fuzzy, that does not help. But, uh, yeah, if you, but I would definitely recommend using this liner before you put any mascara on because like it is goopy and sticky where uh, where that was stuck to my lashes. Now, I actually am pretty blessed to have fairly long lashes and I do use a lash serum to help with that, but they aren't thicker. So I like a little bit more density and then just like a nice wispy look. I, I find that like a very, very dense lash, it just sort of takes away from eye makeup and unless I'm just doing eyeliner, I feel like 
all of my hard work gets lost. So I don't usually wear a really dense lash. So these to me, this style um, would be very nice if you are new to lashes because it's super lightweight. If you have very short lashes and you feel like, you know, even the most like basic of lash is like more than you're used to, these are really nice. They are definitely more of your like, white bread of lashes, right? There's nothing like super special or wowing about them, but you know, I wanted something that could be good for like the basic every day. All right, so both of these mink lashes do have that like fuzzy white layer on them. So that's like really kind of disappointing. Yeah, that's really disappointing. This other one is like that. I think I got a little bit of video to be able to show you guys. I will probably be reaching out to the company. I know it's been after their 14 day policy. Like I said, I got these over Labor Day weekend and they've just been sitting waiting for me to review, um, but I'm gonna reach out to them and see what they say. So if I haven't heard from the company by the time that this video is edited and goes up, I will either leave something in the description box or of course, you know, update you either in a future video or on Instagram, which is one more reason why you should be following me on Instagram at Keep Beauty Real, um, just so you guys can get all the deets. All right, so I'm just placing this I mean, right away, they like stick pretty darn good. Now, I didn't even say in my intro, but the reason that I wanted to try these, I, I like wearing a lash, but I don't do it that often because I hate the residue of like sticky lash glue in my lashes. Like there is nothing worse. I don't know if I'm just so picky and I don't like them up far onto my eyelid, but I really try to get it as close, close, close to my lash line as I can. And so I always have some residue like on my lashes and it takes days to get off and it's such a pain in the butt. So I thought, well, if I could do this, if the liner comes off cleanly, you know, then it's like being able to wear lashes and having no long-term consequences or short-term consequences. Okay, I think that these lashes like sit better than the ones on this side. Obviously they're a bit more like vavoom um, and more dramatic. I mean, they're still not like crazy dramatic. Like I don't want to look like I've got like leaf rakes like coming off my eyes, but I mean, honestly, I don't see why anyone needs mink lashes anymore because you can get such amazing like faux lashes that wh why like why i really like that these are like kind of i don't want to say spiky but they are a little bit more like pc wispy if you can see that yeah i mean these these look really good i'm very happy with this pair um i can definitely feel that there's something there and if i like squinch my eyes they, I don't wanna say they feel pokey, but I can definitely tell that there are like magnets on my lash line. So I'm just gonna zoom you guys out a little bit. I'm feeling like a little like up close and personal. I, I really like this style. Again, this style is Vixen. So I think what I'm gonna do is also to see how easy it is to like take off and put on again. I'm gonna take off the Livin style on this side and then put the Vixen one on. I think especially today just because I did like that smoky eye you know this style of lash would be pretty if you are just doing a liquid liner and some mascara or you know you've got a bold lip and you just want something that like enhances your lash a little bit okay so it did tear off some of the liner um, which personally I think is to kind of be expected so these aren't gonna be something that you can be like woo and just like take them off halfway through the day and pop on a nighttime pair um, without touching up your liner. So that's good to know. Um, this is also gonna be a good way to see how this liner builds up. I'm gonna try really hard not to get any on my lashes this time because now I have like three lashes. Like I've got like horns over here. So I'm gonna try to rectify that situation and put a little more liner on. We'll be right back with this lash on this eye as well. Okay, so while we're in like mid liner dry here, I do have the other um, Vixen. Is it Vixen Lash? 
Yeah, I do have the other Vixen lash on, but I did notice when I was putting this one on, not only did this inner corner not wanna stick with these like more Vavoom lashes, but uh, this inner corner was starting to pull up. And in all honesty, I think that was because I didn't have enough liner on the inside. So that is gonna be one downside to this is you are gonna have to have a little bit thicker line on your eye on the inner corner. The one thing is like, if you're wanting to wear more dramatic lashes, I guess like maybe some good liner goes with that anyway. But if you're someone who doesn't want to have the look of liner, like a lot of days, that's why I like using an adhesive because in all honesty, I don't usually wear eyeliner. Um, and if I do, it's a very, very thin line just cause I like to have as much lid space as possible. So for this, I have to know that I'm going to have to have at least a decent line of eyeliner there for these to be able to stick on to. So just wanted to share that with you guys as I'm going to put these on. And again, I would definitely say like avoid getting this liner on your lashes because it is sticky, sticky. And then also when you go to like dock your lashes and you know, maybe this would be easier with a lash applicator, but when you go to like put the lashes on, if you have liner stuck to the tips of your lashes, the magnets want to stick to the tips of your lashes. So at first, like my lash, when I was bringing it in, it was like, and like wanted to like land on the ends of my eyelashes, which is not the look we're going for. I know some people like lash extensions, but that's not how to get them. So, you know, there's definitely gonna be a learning curve to this, but I would think if you put your liner on and then put your mascara over it, it's gonna cover up any magnetic properties anyway. So um, I have to say, these look pretty good. I am still having a heck of a time trying to get that inner corner on that one. There we go. I think we got it. Um, I will also say if you do have to like pull this away and put it back down, it may or may not work because that liner does have that very like liquid latex, like stretchy sort of like peely feel. So you might have to reapply your liner. So, um, the one nice thing though, is you're not applying more and more glue. Cause I've had that sometimes where all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, my whole like eyelid feels like it's glue. So that did not happen with these. Now there are definitely some pros and cons to this, but it's probably just like anything that you do for the first time is it's like getting into knowing how to use it. For those of you that apply and wear regular adhesive false lashes, I'm sure you remember the first few times you tried it out and it was probably not good. So. This for me, for trying it for the first time, I feel like it was pretty easy to do. Obviously, another big thing is gonna be how long these wear. And I, let's see, right now it's 6.30 at night, so I will wear these for the rest of the day until before I go to bed. And I will make sure in editing to kind of give you guys a little update right here as to how I felt about them, if they stayed on, if my inner corners decided to be like naughty and try to like bust out again, but I, so far, have been pretty happy. Now, I just wanna say, as far as like Glamnetic and just the feel that I've had so far, so I think we've all seen them like all over Instagram and I found it interesting that they sort of have like those other like little mini accounts that aren't named Glamnetic, but it's another like account that is basically selling Glamnetic lashes. So they're like all over the place and there are always, always sales. I highly recommend do not buy these at full price because there's always something that you can do, whether it's like, you know, buy one, get one, or, you know, like a bundle that's on sale, or there's always codes. So please make sure that you don't run out after this video and go get these at full price. The other thing I will say is you can sign up to be part of their like VIP club or like a member club. And I did that because I was like, oh, maybe I could like stack that code, but I couldn't with like the Labor Day code. But I get emails and texts from this company almost every day. So if you are that person that, you know, just can't handle that, I would be aware of that, but you can obviously always unsubscribe. So that's just one thing that I've definitely noticed. However, sometimes that's okay because sometimes I miss out on the deals, right? So. I don't mind it. It's just one thing that I've definitely noticed. Um, I will be very curious to see what they say about those mink lashes. I mean, A, I'd like to return them because I didn't realize they were mink, but I saw that they do have a 14 day return policy, but honestly, they're not like a great quality. I mean, the, I can't say anything about like the quality of the mink, but the quality of that band with it being like fuzzy, like I, right out of the gate, it's already like sort of a negative for me. And I actually prefer uh, that's my phone. That's not a mirror. 
<laughs> I was like looking on the website. Uh, I actually prefer the band on these. I feel like they're more subtle and thinner. Like the actual like plastic part right at the end of the band is much thinner and less detectable. So um, regardless, I would definitely recommend going with the vegan lashes anyhow, um, but I do actually prefer them. So as of right now, would I buy more of these lashes? Yes, I mean, I will see how this goes tonight, how they wear, but for me, this was super easy, like much nicer than having to deal with lash glue. Now, aside from the lasting power, of course, for me, the big thing is gonna be how they clean off. If the liner comes off well, and I don't feel like I'm a sticky mess, that's gonna be great. If it doesn't come off easily, especially now that I've got some in the tips of my lashes, that's gonna be sort of a con. So, um, like I said, I will definitely update you guys down below as far as like how that all went, but I could definitely see myself getting more of these lashes. Um, I love wearing lashes, it's just like, the cleanup that just drives me nuts. So um, I could see, you know, getting another pair or two if they're on sale. Let me know in the comments down below, have you tried this brand? Have you tried another brand? I know that there's definitely a lot of magnetic lashes out there. I did also save those Kiss lashes that I had that I was trying um, <laughs> in that last, in the Natasha Denona Glam review, um, the sandwich ones. And I did save them because I thought maybe I could pop them over this liner. So I might do that in another video. I know that those only have like three or four of the magnets. Um, so, you know, who knows how well it'll stay on, but I will probably give that a go just because I have them. Because if it's something that I already bought, and I can get some more use out of it, why not, right? So I wanna thank you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Um, I will, of course, leave any updated info in the description box as well. I wanna thank you guys for hanging out with me. Let me know if you're gonna try these out. Like, I definitely think um, as far as application, they're pretty easy. I, I really love this style, so I definitely recommend this one. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and playing with makeup with me. If you did like this video, you found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe so you don't miss out on those future videos, and I will see you really soon. That for me, hair, <laughs> but they are a little bit more piecey whipsy.